This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, host of the original Southern Remedy, the show where I answer your medical questions. Subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on any podcasting app. Thanks for tuning in to Everyday Tech. This is Abram Nanny here with Sabir Abdul Haq, who is an IT expert. Hello, hello. Today on Everyday Tech, the server is open. We want to take the time to answer your tech questions. Mm. Did you get a new phone you don't know much about, thinking about buying a personal computer? Maybe your TV went out and you're looking at getting a new one. We have several emails to answer, but we also want to take your calls. And of course, there's a little bit of national tech news that we're going to be talking about between your calls and emails. So... Email everydaytech at mpbonline.org if you have any questions or comments. And don't forget about the Talk to Us feature on the MPB Public Media app where you can record a video or v- voice message and send it straight to us at Everyday Tech. Whew. Yes, All indeed. Right. Yes, so, indeed. Look at you. How, how is it going, Sabir, man? How you doing? Brother, it is one foot in front of the other. I'm just super thankful to be here and uh, glad to be up there answering some questions. It's it's that Black, Black Friday uh Holiday shopping oh, man, season, it's coming everybody, up. and every now and then people will text me, be like, "Hey, is is this a good computer to use? Is this computer good to use?" And they'll text me just to ask a quick question. I'll be like, "No, mm-hmm. don't do that. <laughs> That's a perfect one. Go get it. Jump on it. You know what right. I'm saying? So, uh, you know, just trying to make sure that people ain't making the bad. They're not making the bad, you know, decisions. Uh, in terms of buying something just because it looks good. so Now, Sabir, I'm going to come right on out and say I'm going to need your help with tablet buying this no year. Problem. Oh, no yeah. problem. No problem. I got you we covered, Jermaine. We still remember Jermaine. last time. I got you covered, Jermaine. <laughs> Look, we're going to make it happen. And I and, and it's not that rough. It's not that rough. Just deep breath. And before you start doing it, but uh, we'll, we'll touch bases after. On, it's a lot on, of reading, Sabir. You it, say it it's is. not that rough. It's but. not. It's not. And actually, on my page, on my, on my business's Facebook page, I went and just posted something last night. I think I texted you and Shane. The graphic, that's in that Oh, uh, no. I okay, so. all right, all right. Well, I, I sent it to you as well, Jermaine, but uh, yeah, I mean, just a quick way to be able to, just some things to keep in mind. But yeah. tablet buying, we got you covered too on that. Thanks, so, Sabir. Yeah, I got For you sure. covered. <laughs> For sure. SD, and SD. We, are, we are live today, November mm. al- November 15th. 15th? Wednesday, what November day? 15th yeah, already. 15th. Man. So next week is Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Black so if Friday. you've got any questions about that coming up. Yep. Jim, I see you. Give me just a second. I've got an email I want to get to. Yeah. Um, we uh, we talked previously on a sh- on a, our last Q and A about someone called in about what to do with old phones and there's a lot of different options. But someone yeah. wanted to clear up that there is a uh, Emmy called and said it is my understand or emailed us and said it is my understanding that you can donate any old phone to domestic violence shelters yes. as they can be used to call emergency services even if they do not have a phone plan activated that's correct and we we were talking about that when we had a second and that uh we looked it up that is a thing you can do with uh the national domestic abuse Vi- uh, violence coalition or something mm, like that yes yes so, uh yeah so that is that is an option for your old phones and that's, that that's so necessary if you're trying to just let them go at least you can be able to do that real quick so yeah that that's absolutely necessary thank you emmy was her name emmy. emmy thanks for that nugget yes, of information yes, thank thanks you. so much emmy for that yes indeed all right and like i said though we've got jim in houston who has a question or comment for us jim what's going on hey good morning good morning, good morning. Good morning. I have a question about hooking my old laptop computer to the television to use as a monitor. Okay. Um, it's a 2010 model Presario. Uh, wow. That means anything. Compact. Yeah. Compact. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And I was using a VGA cable to hook it to my other TV, and that was working. Mm-hmm. And I got a new television, uh, a TCL Series 3 Roku. Mm-hmm. That doesn't have the VGA connection. Yeah. So I got a VGA to a HDMI adapter. Right. And it doesn't seem to work. Okay. So go ahead. So, you, so I, I didn't mean to cut you off. So you're just trying to figure out a way around that? Yeah. I, 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 I own a, the, 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 the monitor on the laptop is pretty well messed up. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to hook it to my TV so I can see what I'm doing with this. Understood. Uh, 
Understood. Understood. That's a great question. You're uh, so a lot of times you may want to confirm that it's bi-directional, right? So when you, when you have a video signal, sometimes, especially uh, VGA is what you call analog. Analog is in the same thing as, you know, the opposite of digital and digital. The best way, okay. <laughs> the, okay. I guess the lazy definition for analog is the opposite of digital and digital is off is the opposite of analog. But uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> I, 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 that's a good way to put it. Yeah, know. it's basically it. But uh, but basically, because VGA is an analog signal, you will have to make sure that it is that it is bidirectional. I've actually done that before, um, a few times actually, to get a. Um, and it's easier if you have the DVIA. Are you familiar with DVIA? It might be three rows of pins. I think it's a total of fifteen. Does does your laptop have a DVIA port or a Display Port, or is it only VGA? Or do you know what I mean by that? Uh, oh, it, 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 the the port that it, the, the port that it, that I've been using has those three. Three rows of five, yeah. you said, and, and it's, it's blue. Like the, the middle one is offset a little bit. Yeah, and it's and it's blue, or sometimes it's gray, or sometimes it's white. Well, I bet. Um, I don't think it has a color. Okay, okay. Well, the the main thing, so yeah, that is VGA. Some computers, you said it's a 2010, it might have a display port. I'm surprised it doesn't have a HDMI port that you can just run HDMI to HDMI. But the, my recommendation would be to find, uh, you just need to make sure that you get an adapter that is bidirectional because sometimes it may only read that a certain way. And some of these I've seen online are powered. Like it may even like, like oh. some of those, they may even be powered because it has to make that analog video signal become digital. So I've seen those, and yeah, oh. you got that TCL. Yeah, that that's a nice TV actually. Uh, th- some really of these big bot. That's a that's a pretty that's a pretty impressive and and not very expensive one there. Hey, bro. It's not a it's not an expensive one. It's not expensive, but I've ever bought. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like it's. It's funny, like some of these, like like you try to get a video game or anything else like that. The TVs are cheaper than the video games or something like that, or, or some of the other electronics. But yeah, definitely recommend uh, making sure it's a bi-directional adapter. Bi-directional. Yeah. 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 We in 1983 we bought a color. Our first color TV cost 350 dollars and it mm. was a 13 inch screen. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> see, and, and, and now you got something that's 50, 60, 70 inches. You can go yeah. to some of these big box stores and say 298 I was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> if I could travel back in time and give this to my young self, I might have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish cars would do like computers and computers. Right. But, but, but anyway. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, appreciate your helpful. question. I, I enjoy your show. Thank you so much. Cool, cool. Thanks appreciate so your much calling, for brother. calling in, Jim. Yep. We appreciate that. Um, I believe, uh, let's see. Well, I said before we got into everything, you know, there's also a bit of national tech news to okay. cover. Okay. Um, so I'm sure we, if you've been listening to the station a lot, you might've heard it on NPR and stuff. Um, so president Biden issued an executive order that quote, and this is a very wordy and long quote. Hmm. Um, but he broke the, the official white house briefing breaks it down a little more. And we'll break it down as we continue if we get the chance to. Um, So the quote says, it establishes new standards for AI safety and security, Mm. protects Americans' privacy, advances equity and civil rights, stands up for consumers and workers, promotes innovation and competition, and advances American leadership around the world and more. So a lot of big words to say that this executive order is coming out for them to kind of initiate the process yeah. of incorporating AI into governmental services. Right. And, you know, and the goal is obviously to do that in the best way possible. Right. But at some point like this, especially just based on how AI is, I would imagine there's going to be some regulation that happens at some point. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a, reg- there's going to be a bit of regulation. And that happens. I mean, it's the government. But... um There's going to be a bit of regulation because there's all kinds of ways, just like how computer programs allow you to start this nice little word processing program. There are also programs that allow you to cause viruses. So any different any different way, there's got to be a regulation so that there to be. Now, I think this that's kind of like a blanket statement of saying we're going to let AI AI is here to stay, but we're also trying not to have Skynet (laughs) like Terminator. For for those that didn't catch that reference and talking about Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's it's, it's real. Really like um, there's no legislation or regulation in it yet. It's Correct. just saying that they are going to start 
initiating that process. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the first point that it says is standards for AI safety and security. They go on in the press release to break it down and say uh, they're going to require safety test results to be shared with the U.S. government, mm -hmm. develop standards, tools, and tests to help ensure that AI systems are safe, secure, and trustworthy, mm -hmm. evaluate how agencies collect and use available information, and the the most important one to me that I noticed is protect Americans from fraud. Mm, that I have that underlined in that right that's, there. That's excellent. Uh, mm. I f and I feel like, you know, if people have been listening for a while, we've had several callers come in concerned about AI fraud yeah, and scams. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and I think, you know, you know, kudos to looking at like, hey, this is I, I used to do droning. I used to do droning when droning first started and when it really got especially in Mississippi. Like when droning first started, it was a very small, minute amount of paperwork you have to do. Now you have to go through basically what pilots have to understand. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure because a 2.2, a 2.2 pound uh, drone can bring, can actually cause damage to a, to an actual aircraft. Oh, like that's a 747. A that can, that's yeah. a problem. So, I mean, so and they, there was one thing to say, yeah, okay, people are just going to drone. It'll be fine. This was like 2015, March, 2015, actually when I started and that was fine. And then it got serious. FAA was like, I'm not, we're not playing. We're going to, we're going to follow this. And it's the same way with AI, same way with any new technology. Everybody's like, okay, we'll go see how it goes. And then when you look at the applications and that there are again, using this magic word, threat actors that can mm -hmm. do different things to, you know, try to go ahead and take people money, do different things automatically and everything else that it it's, it's a concern, but it's, I'm glad it's at least being addressed, right? I mean, right. You, just, you brought up really good points. It's kind of a blanket statement, but basically says, we're going to play in the sandbox, but if a dragon shows up, understand, <laughs> right. you have to slay the dragon. Right, so right, for sure. Yeah. I think a, a funny thing kind of when uh, when he was talking about it, I think it was it might have been like a press conference or something, mm. or it might have been before. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was talking about how uh, – People have used AI to mimic his own voice. Oh, yes. Joe Biden's voice. Oh, my gosh. Um, and he said he was sitting there listening to some videos of it. He said, when, when did I say that? <laughs> so, yeah, I think I thought I found that pretty. The the voice AI stuff is hilarious. It is funny. Oh like they had all the former presidents playing like mm -hmm. Fortnite or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's perfect. It's yeah. very funny. But. Yeah could be very dangerous. Use very the wrong way. Use the wrong way, right? All right. Thanks for listening to MPB Think Radio and tuning in to Everyday Tech this morning. My name is Abram Nanny. I've got Sabir Abdul-Haq here with me. Email your questions or comments to everydaytech at mpbonline.org where you will you can attach a picture or screenshots or whatever to help our guys assess your situation. Or download the MPB public media app and use the Talk to Us feature to leave us an audio or video message. Mm. So we want to hear from you. Yeah, we do. We, we haven't even. I, I've never gotten one of the talk to us. I think that'd be really I, helpful for that would be so for awesome. everyday tech, especially like the video. Like, like the, some of the videos come in. It's yeah. good to meet faces. Like we've talked to people. We just talked to that gentleman from Houston. We talked to folks up there near Grenada one time. We had that right. call. Um, several other folks, and it's just that, that one gentleman that called from Mobile that time. Remember mm -hmm. that? It's just it's really good to be able to see names and faces and everything, but. Uh, it's good to know that, you know, it's, it's, I love to see that light in people's eyes when they're like, aha. Like, yeah. I can just imagine yeah. how Jim was when I was saying, make sure you get a bi-directional cable. Not a lot of people know that. Not a lot of people, they'll just sell you, you know, Amazon or some of these other folks, whatever, they will sell you these things, not telling you that it kind of needs to be bi-directional, especially if what you're using is kind of dated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, look, Sabir, what's, what it, what's great about the Talk To Us feature when it comes down to everyday tech is mm -hmm. they can actually maybe show you mm -hmm. what it is they're talking about or show exactly. you the port, and then you can tell me if Correct. it's a male or female, Correct. a coaxial <laughs> or not. I All don't know. Stuff. But, yes, yeah, indeed. it's yes, awesome indeed. when you can do that with I the video that. on I the Talk that. To Us I feature. Love that. Yeah. It, and I definitely think that we've got... There, there's enough things, and, and you're exactly right, Jermaine. It's good to be able to have that kind of feedback with folks and just make it more like a dialogue, a conversation, instead mm -hmm. of something just kind of long drawn out. So you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. And they, we did get a email, though. Um, mm. And if you're looking, if you're talking about the Talk to Us feature, that's in the MPB Public Media app. Yes. So go on your App Store or Google Play that's or right. whatever. Find that there. Mm -hmm. um, but the email from Al says, thanks for the show. Try to listen every week. So thank you, Al, for that. Thanks, Al. Last week and again today, you talked about two-factor authentication. I use two-factor as much as possible, but some websites like Amazon want me to enter a mobile number. 
I do not have or use a cell phone I, as I have a problem with hearing. Mm. Besides, I do use two-factor with email with ease. Any mm. suggestion? Mm. So even though they're not using the cell phone because of, you know, unfortunate, the different, the different circumstances in terms of not being able to use it, it still would be necessary to be able to have one just for this because you're not using the cell phone only just to talk. You can still read. You can still you can still read the uh, when the two factor authentication. Uh, let's back up just a little bit. Two factor authentication is a way and a method. It's the new security standard, uh, listeners, that. If you're going to log into something, it says, oh, okay, you are, in fact, Abram Nanny trying to access Abram Nanny's, you know, bank account Mm -hmm. and and different things. It says that that's that's who you are. It's it's a way of digitally doing it with a small six digit, sometimes eight digit, sometimes 10 digit code. Uh, And it's all done by math. So shout out to all you math people out there. (laughs) I love you. Um, But uh, it basically goes through a program, goes through some math and says spits out a code. So two factor authentication comes as a text message. You don't is nothing to talk to. You don't have to talk to anybody. There is a call for there is a call uh, button. There's a way that you can be called. But there's also a way that you can be texted that number Mm -hmm. or even better. Microsoft and Google both have their authentication app which you can use your phone, take a picture of a QR code, which looks like a little box of static. And that a lot of people are familiar with what QR codes are, but uh, it looks like a little box of static. You would take a picture of that and it automatically changes your six digits, your 10 digits, your 12 digits, however many is supposed to go for that two-factor authentication, every 30 seconds, every mm-hmm. 60 seconds. So that works out, and that, that does not require talking to anybody. So right. a cell phone, even if you don't use a cell phone, a tablet, a tablet is fine. You don't have to, and tablets, to talk about what Jermaine was talking about, you can get tablets, uh, you can get really inexpensive tablets. You don't have to go to some big, huge store and spend $600. You can go to a pawn shop and get them for 100 bucks, mm. And so, and you can get one. So a tablet may also work if he, if this person is just adamant about new, using phones, understandable. Go ahead and use a tablet. You can go get yourself a used or a new tablet. Some of these big box stores, I, I even call out Walmart for this instance. Walmart has decent tablets for like a hundred bucks. You know, so yeah. you can go ahead and get yourself a tablet, do your two factor authentication, and boom, you're good to go. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Well, I hope that helps you, Al. Um, Daniel and Clinton, we're coming to you next. Uh, I gotta say, I'm I'm reading the description of your question, and I'm a little worried. What's going on, Daniel? Uh-oh. Well, I have several friends that have uh, let me know about this website, and it looks just exactly like, ni- like Netflix. It's called Look Movie Foundation, mm. and they have uh, the same time, I'll, for example, uh, they had a big Barbie party, and the same week that Barbie was out, they had it on this website. All the new movies are on there, and I, mm-hmm. my question is, now, I haven't looked at it on my computer they do and anytime they come out like there's a several of the movies that are freedom and just so many different movies that are on and i'm just concerned that um i'm old enough to remember when pirating became people were were pirating music and stealing Mm -hmm. music off the internet oh yeah I'm just wondering, eventually, or is everybody going to get called to the principal's office because they've been, <laughs> they've, they've been stealing these movies? I'm mm. just, I, I won't, I won't do it on my computer. Right. But I, I since I was in my car uh, coming back from the, the doctor, I thought I would uh, call and find out if you uh, have you heard of it or uh, could it be something that you could get in trouble about. I will say I I have not heard of that site specifically, hmm. but that is movie pirating. That is pirating. Yeah. That is illegal movie pirating. Hmm. Um, uh, I think they call it bootlegging. Yeah, bootlegging. Yeah. yeah, the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, they're not playing with that. Mm-hmm. They're not playing with that. Now, That's- what I will say, um, likely you or your friend or whoever is doing it will probably not be the one to fall for that. It will be hmm. the it will be the the website will get taken down. They'll mm-hmm. be fine mostly. Mm-hmm. Right. But there have been instances in the past, like the Nintendo guy, um, who was using a, a selling a port for yeah. with uh, hacked Nintendo games on yeah. it, yeah. Um, and he was fined for 
millions. Yeah, you don't want them trouble. You don't and, want them and problems. Wasn't able to pay it, so yeah. he he had to go to jail for a while. And mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure of the whole story. I can't I can't rattle it off right now. Right. Um. But well, yeah, that is that is pirating. And also, well, I appreciate y'all and y'all on the Bay. Thank you so much. I just want to say real quick: be careful going to those sites because they mm-hmm. also have viruses and ways for you to get hacked. Just be careful. I mean, they do it. They do it on their TV. I yeah. won't do it on mine. Good job. <laughs> I understand okay. that. Be, be careful. Be careful. I understand that. Thank you so much. All right, brother. All right, appreciate you. All right, staying on the phones, we're going to move to Linda in Columbus. What's going on, Linda? Uh-oh. Oh, Linda, have we got you there? Are we gone? Who is, oh. who is this? I don't have my radio on. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Abram here at Everyday Tech. You're with uh, Abram and Sabir on Everyday Tech. What's How's going on? Abram? Yes, ma'am. Hey. <laughs> a lot going on. Uh, a couple lot is going on. You're, you're talking to a novice um to technology okay. and um, I own a Galaxy S10e, which okay. is what I'm on right now. Okay. Um, I also get most of my information from an old-fashioned phony under-the-counter <laughs> radio <laughs> that used to be like ten. And people said someone came and worked on my house one day. <laughs> I'm Mr. Chapman. All that? right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's your, what's your oh. common question? I guess, I don't know, I haven't been listening to your show, but um, what is your, and I have listened to you before in the past, um, I, I, I guess it would be, how do you feel secure in this day and age and time? Oh, my goodness. How do you, what is the best way to lock down your, I'm just now looking at my phone and seeing ways to lock, put it in a secure file. Right, yeah. In a, you know, and going back to the days of the PCs, and mm. uh, which I didn't participate in those. I was mm. born in 1961, by the way, at the end, November 18th. God willing, I make it three more days. Gotcha. But um, the way, uh, yeah, that, I mean, well, I think I've I think I've managed to do it. So I, 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 I just, I don't know. Maybe I need to just hang up and turn on the radio. No, 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 no it's no. fine. Um, Linda, I will say my reaction is is that is a huge tough question, mm. um, but it is it is a uh, um, something that every person has to answer necessarily for mm. themselves. Yeah. Sabir, what, you, what 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 comes to your mind? I would say if you do a Google search on like a YouTube search on how to set up or establish two factor authentication, it's not really hard. Oh my, they have these big old huge words. It's not really hard, though. You, there are some great videos on how to set up two-factor authentication, and I would recommend changing your password at least twice a year and make it to a uh, – that's it. Those, if you do those two things, you, you, you've got a leg up. What is two-factor authentication? It, so, so it would be sure to be me? It's is a way – yeah, it's a, it's a mathematic way of showing that you are Linda. It, it's not – and not Sabir and not Abram. Right. It, it's like it's, it's you are Linda. It, so, and it has a mathematic way of doing that. So what they do is like if, if they say – say I'm trying to log in on – to my bank account um, and then they, they text me a number – or I tell them, text me a number on my phone, and then I can enter that number into the into the. I'm not explaining this well. It's into the, it's basically the a passcode or yeah, whatever. It, you basically says that it basically says Linda's number is phone number is what? Okay, well here's this big mathematic problem. We're gonna bounce something off of it, and we're gonna send a six digit code to your phone, Linda. If you type that code incorrectly, we'll, we that means that that digitally proves you are Linda. If it doesn't come to us, that's not Linda, and we're going to go tell the Linda that we know that, hey, someone's trying to be you. Mm, and so it's, a, exactly way of, it's it a way of proving that you are who you are digitally with math. That's basically okay. it. Okay. So there's algorithm. Yep. That's what I was thinking about Algor- years ago. The fact that you said algorithm, you already understand how this works. Good job. You already, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Thanks for the call, Linda. A L D L Y T H M S. 
I'm sorry? Algorithms, A-L-G-O-R-I-T-H-M-S. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. You that's got it. it. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank Thanks for you your so call. much for your call. Have a good one. All right. Thank you so much. We're glad you found our show, Everyday Tech, on MPB Think Radio. This is Abram Nanny, still here with Sabir abdul Haq, who is ready to answer your questions. Email us at everydaytech at mpbonline.org. And Sabir, i got to be honest, hmm. I'm happy we don't have these cameras running right now Look for us during the break when that NBA Jam comes NBA on. NBA Jam, come on. I start dancing, man. That's, that's my childhood <laughs> there, man. That's my childhood. Oh, man. It's, it's still so good. I love it. It's remarkable. I love it. I love all it. right. All right. Thank you, Connor, for calling in. Connor from Hattiesburg, what is your comments or question? What you got for us? First off, can y'all hear me? Yes, yes sir. Bro. You're good. All right, right on. Uh, I live here in Hattiesburg, and long story short, my brother passed away this past year, and I've, I'm Sorry. the executor of the state, and I've got an iMac. It's roughly a 2013 model that he had. He was a musician, so he yeah. had a lot of stuff on it. So, I've got all the you know the evidentiary stuff I need necessary to prove that I'm the executor of the state. My question is, I need a place here in Hattiesburg. I'd like to take it and have it wiped clean. Okay. Uh, still a good computer, and it, so I you know I don't know the legal ramifications or anything else. But right. if, if two venues I could either use it or I'm more willing to donate it. And in addition, I've got an older Mac Mini. I'd like to do the same thing. That's my personal one. Yeah. So it's kind of a shameless question. For, yeah. Is there anybody here in Hattis who I can work who works with Apple specifically that I could go to? Now, uh, the question: Are you trying to to wipe it clean, or are you wanting to save that stuff and then wipe it? I'd probably save it and then wipe it because, as I said, he's a musician, and we're we're settling the estate now, and I don't believe there's anything on there that's necessary or of importance, but I would like to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first off, uh, condolences to you and your family. Uh, first off, on that, yeah, for um, sure. definitely. Uh, so that for that's first things first. Secondly, uh, I'm from Hattiesburg myself, Southern Miss grad. Um, I would recommend. Yeah, I, it's Camelot. Is that the name of that company right over there by the uh, Walmart on 98? It's uh, I forgot the name of it. it. It's something like Camelot, or at least it's kind of medieval. But it's right there by the Walmart on 98. If you get on the the westbound exit, like as if you were leaving out of Walmart going back on 98, it's off to your right. Yeah. They they okay. used to be really good, and even if they don't do it, they may be able to point you in the right direction. I know Computer Karma used to be in Hattiesburg, but somebody told me they shut down not long ago. Um, okay. I would right. also recommend if you just can't find anybody on Google or anything else like that, um, stop by. Maybe see if you can touch bases with the Department of Computer Sciences on, on Southern Miss campus. And I think William okay. Carey and PRCC have like a technology or IT based uh by based, uh, you know, departments touch base with them and see like, hey, I'm trying, you know, walk them through the same thing you shared with us. They may know like some of their students, you know, again, or some of the uh, some of the teachers and faculty at each of those, you know, respective institutions. They may be able to point you in the right way. And, uh, you know, again, uh, condolences to you, condolences to you and your family for the loss. But, yeah, definitely, if you're trying to get that information, you want to first get in there to see, and you know, all that stuff. I'm sure some of those folks will be able to point you in the right way. Because, you know, one of the issues is I don't know his username or password. Right. So I can't. Right. And, right. And so right. That, then, then I'll end with this. I've mm -hmm. got a beautiful monitor. Can I use my current Mac Mini and utilize the monitor? <laughs> Your Mac Mini? Uh, if, if you, I mean, if, is, does it have like the Thunderbolt? Does that Mac Mini you have has like the uh, Thunderbolt adapter and everything that you can connect out to it or? Or if, if it doesn't, yeah. you can get one from like Best Buy or Walmart. They Walmart used to carry them too, but yeah, Best Buy. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know iMac being an integrated, you know, platform mm -hmm. of both the, the visual plus the processor. Right. I could just bypass the processor and use the, the screen. You can you can try that one again. Now I'm, now I start I start being in the kiddie pool when it comes to Mac stuff. I know full well that if the like for PC, there's ways to get around it, but like in terms right. of 
in terms of Mac, I'm not particularly sure. Again, that would be a conversation with someone who's a stronger Mac professional than myself, and they uh, they can probably tell you. But I would recommend, like I said, those companies. I, I, Camelot. I feel like it's Camelot. Something is something medieval is in the name right there by the West Hattiesburg Walmart. They're over there. Computer Karma used to be there, and like I said, if all else fails, touch bases with your institutions that are in the area. Again, I'm Southern Miss to the top myself. So, but uh, but uh, touch base with Southern Miss, and they may know somebody. They might be like, oh, you need to touch base with this person or that, but they can at least point you in the right direction. Yeah, and you can. If you'd like, you can look back at some old, uh, some old everyday tech podcast descriptions, and maybe you can find some uh, some information there that you can yeah, no. you can use. Yeah. All right, thank you that. so much, Connor. Before I end, oh, go me, ahead. I to talk talk to you app, and, and it seemed pretty straightforward. But when I tried to send it, it wouldn't allow me to send it. Oh. I don't know. What, what. Okay, um, are you on an iPhone or an Android or iPhone? And and so I, you know, I went to, I found the app or the with, within it, the, and, and basically recorded as directed, and then it pops up basically an email, you know, with the with the recording attached, and, and but the the send button or arrow was whited out, and it wouldn't allow me to do it. A keyboard came up like I'm supposed to type something extra, and I, there's nothing to type. I was hmm. I was going to send it to you. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Right. Hmm. Um. I think it's. I think it'll make you uh, enter a subject for you to send the email. Hmm. Um, if it didn't automate a subject, then that could be it. Um, but yeah. we would we would always appreciate a, a second try if you get the chance, yeah. or you know, we'll we'll talk it out. Or you can screenshot it and email it to us if you yeah. want, and yeah. we'll we'll talk. We'll send, get back to you on it. All right. Well, thank you for your help. No thank problem, you bro. so much, Thanks Connor, for calling, for calling in. All right, we're going to stick on the phones. Let's go to Sydney and Hollyburg. What's going on, Sydney? Yeah. Man, how y'all doing? All, All right, how are you? Oh, I can't complain. This is what I got. I've been changing uh, these uh, uh, internet to try to get the best internet because everything going streaming now. Mm, mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And I had four. Of them. Now, this I need a, y'all uh, opinion on this here. We got one night called Starlink. S T A R L I N. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh the problem I'm having, that's the best uh best uh internet that we ever got. I mm-hmm. mean that thing that thing when we got it hooked up and mm-hmm. got it going, boy, mm-hmm. my T V do good behind. It. Yes. But the problem I got, I got a a, a home surveyor camera. Mm-hmm. And uh, the last internet I had was using it, and you could plug in the back of it, and I can get you know get my survey on my phone. But this here Starlink ain't got nothing you can plug in. Got gotcha, you. Okay. Gotcha. How can I get by this? So one of the you said it doesn't show up on your phone. It does connect the app that you know of. The the app is connecting, but you can't see any video. Yeah, because the man that put my surveyor camera in told me that the, it got to be plugged into that, that uh, router for me to get it on my phone. So unless, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of cameras you're using. Because a lot of these cameras this day and age use Wi-Fi, right? Um, mm. And the, a lot of these cameras use, which means there are no wireless ones. As long as they are connecting to the router, Using your same yeah. Wi-Fi that your TV, that your phone, and I get it. Like Star yeah. Starlink is in, in a lot of rural areas. Mm-hmm. Starlink sometimes yeah. is your only option mm-hmm. if you want to get really yeah. good internet. If you, Starlink is your only option, and they're pretty good. You just got to wait for a while. Yeah. But um, uh, uh-huh. but uh, once you get them going, uh, my thinking is if you're using Wi-Fi. Uh, you may have to touch bases with your person if if you don't if you're not sure if you're going to be able to take care of it to turn down your what's called your resolution. That means how crisp yeah. that video is. So you can get some yeah. you can get some real crisp video that looks like you can reach out and poke poke somebody intruding around your house in the eye. But then you also got some that kind of that, that you can kind of turn the resolution down and you can see how the image is not as clean, not as crisp, not as clear, but you can still understand what's going on. 
I would recommend, yeah. especially because you're using Starlink, and although I'm sure Elon Musk appreciates your money, but you, uh, yeah. you know, because you um, because you're doing that, it still is going to eat up a lot of your internet. Plus, you said you have TVs, which means that's eating up some of your internet. Your regular phones, for whatever else, that's eating internet. You may have computers in your home, that's eating your yeah. internet. Usually, surveillance yeah. cameras are the biggest drinkers, and I'm using that as yeah. the analogy of water. They are the biggest drinkers of network speed and resources. So uh-huh. if you can turn down that resolution, if you don't, if you're not, if you don't feel comfortable about it, you may have to restart it a couple of times to make sure it goes through. But if you were yeah. to, if you turn down that resolution, that will work. And I know that may seem like, well, that defeats the purpose. I want to see if somebody's coming around my property that I don't need to. I want to make sure that nobody's doing the wrong thing. I understand, but it's kind of a trade off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, now, um, Sydney, your is that your question? Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. And then mm-hmm. uh, you said that Starlink is a pretty good uh, uh, internet provider. They are for for rural areas yeah, for sure. Definitely yeah. for rural areas, yes, sir. Yeah, because we got a moonlight view. We stay so cool in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that that is yeah. uh, that is probably good for you then. Yeah. Yeah. Just check yeah, those right resolution there. settings. Yeah, check those resolution settings so it's not drinking up so much of your internet because that might be the reason why it's offline. And your phone may need to go through some updates too. If your phone itself has not been updated, uh, and make sure the device itself. Sometimes these, I just set up a camera system for a friend of mine's office out here in Flowood uh, a few weeks back, yeah. and uh, as soon as I turned it on, I said, "Oh, we've got an update." Mm-hmm. So I just we just got it. So I mean, but so make sure your cameras are up to date. Make sure your phone is up to date, and you may need to dial back your resolution on the video uh, video footage, the video playback, just a tad. Okay, but I was listening to you when you said that. See, the internet at the house was good on that surveyed camera. Okay, I just can't. I just can't get it on my phone like I used to. You know, because when I'm away from home, right. yes. yeah. I can always pull up on my phone. Gotcha. The internet at the house, because we put that, we put it on that internet, put it on that Starlink. Yes, it's sir. It's good. Yes, sir. But I, I'm, I'm just having problems about trying to get it on my phone because the man that said I got to have it plugged into that router for right. me to get it on my phone when I, I'm away from home. That I don't know about. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that person is not, you know, telling you something that's not accurate. I just don't know about that yeah. one. But I like right um, now I've got I've got four of my clients right now on my phone and as I'm talking, I've got one client in Atlanta, I've got one client uh-huh. I've got one client in Flowood, I've got my home camera and another client yeah. in South Mississippi. I can see all of them and I'm using my uh I'm not even using Wi Fi. So it just depends on you might be in kind of a tough area that does not have yeah. the strongest data and that might be why it's not yes. coming through. So if your okay. if your data is not strong in wherever you are currently, right. you're probably not going to be able to stream that yeah. very live. Yep. Yeah. But that doesn't oh, mean okay. that the camera's not working. It right. could just be your your cell phone is not receiving enough signal. Right. That's exactly right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And no y'all problem. keep up the good work. Y'all having a lot of people, man. Appreciate oh, it. Oh man, y'all I appreciate that. That is. And it's free. And it's free. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you gotta be. You gotta be free. Can't be free information. Appreciate you calling in. That so that is awesome yeah, for me to hear. Day, All right now. Okay, that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank sir. you so much. That is that is awesome for me to hear. Yeah. All right. Hear, um, I think we're gonna stick here. Okay. I think we're gonna okay. roll straight through this. Uh, let's go to Larry in Biloxi, who's having problems with their keyboard. Larry, what is going on? Hi there, guys. How are you? All right. I'm All right. How's it going? Good. I've got a pleasure for you. Okay. Um, uh, I've got a ASUS laptop mm-hmm. with the latest, latest version of uh, Microsoft Windows on it. And a while back, I got a uh, Microsoft update, and the next time I started my computer, the keyboard no longer worked. Mm. It, it's like the update turned it off. Mm. And I've tried all sorts of ways of trying to get it to turn back on. Mm-hmm. I, can, uh, I can put a Bluetooth keyboard on it, Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, so I can still use the computer, yeah. but I'd really like to have that keyboard working again. Right, right, right. Any ideas? 
So you definitely took one of the things I was going to recommend to you is to see if it would still work with an extra keyboard. So congratulations, pat yourself on the back for already starting going down the the, the path to troubleshooting. Um, there is a way you may need to Google the steps or YouTube the steps on how to get to your device manager. Well, let's back up. Do you know what version of operating system you're using? Uh, what's the latest version? Windows 11? Windows 11? Okay, so you're using Windows 11. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, you, I'm on Windows 11. Okay. So you may I, need to I'm use... I'm actually, actually on Windows 10 at the time, but okay. I've upgraded since then. To 11, right. All right. So generally there's... There are regular updates that, for example, Microsoft Microsoft, or, you know, using the, the Windows 10, Windows 11, those are updates that go specifically for that. There are updates that also go to the components inside your computer, including your keyboard. So we may need to go ahead and you may need to do a YouTube, YouTube on how to be able to go into device manager. It's a part of your computer that basically controls everything in your computer from uh, your mm -hmm. keyboard. I've been, yeah. I've been in device manager. Okay. You can't even see the keyboard in there. You don't even see it? Nope. Okay. So um, did you try to go ahead and do the scan for hardware changes? Looks like a little uh looks like a little magnifying glass next to a computer. Did you do that? Uh, that I don't recall doing. Okay. If you would do that, this is a thing, it's, a, it's just a little button that says scan for hardware changes. I imagine something, sometimes an update will happen. I imagine you do scan for hardware changes, it will pop up. If it doesn't, you may need to go to your computer manufacturer's website and look to see if there is a firmware update. So firmware, hardware is the internal parts inside of a computer. Software is applications like Microsoft Office or Google Chrome. Firmware, hard, soft, firm. Firm is what allows the two of those things to talk. It's what allows those things to talk. So it, it allows for hardware to talk to firmware, to, to software, excuse me. And if that right. is not updated, and that's also known as your BIOS, right? Most on PCs, if you update your BIOS, very few people ever update your BIOS. I just realized that I forgot to update my BIOS on my computer yesterday. I was like, golly, I'm still using eight-month-old well, uh, firmware. I've updated the BIOS. You've updated. Great, that's great. Great. So the only thing I'm thinking about now is that is if you were to go ahead and do the scan for hardware changes inside a device manager, ordinarily it will pop right up. Ordinarily, if it's not, there's something damaged under the hood. That's because you, you've done everything software wise. Uh, I've seen situations. I'm not saying you've done this, but I've seen situations where someone dropped, you know, you know, a little bit of water on their keyboard. And because the front, the motherboard is directly under your keyboard on most laptops. A drop of water onto a motherboard is akin to dropping salt on raw nerves. Is it's it's that bad, like mm -hmm. in terms of that. So what what you would expect salt on raw nerves or muscle tissue is doing the same thing to a motherboard. So I mean something like that could have happened. Something may have gotten jarred inside of it. Without looking in front of it, I really couldn't tell you, but the first that we always train to be able to look for the easiest fix. Easiest fix, I would say try that scan for hardware changes inside of uh device manager first. Okay. You know, I went on went online and looked, and there was about three different options there yeah. for trying to fix it. And I tried two of them; they they didn't work. Yeah. The last one I haven't tried yet. What yeah. it said to do was take take the back off and take the battery out yeah. and boot it without the battery in it, and it might and it might come back up. Does that sound plausible? That that is plausible, but that would that's usually for an issue when you're having something wrong with the power. So I want to make sure I understand your question. Your, did the PC not turn on anymore, or the computer just won't launch the keyboard? The computer doesn't launch the keyboard. Okay, I got you. So you, when you hit the power button, it goes to the Windows 11 loading screen, but the keyboard just don't work oh, until yeah. you. Okay, I've been using it. I've been mm -hmm. using it ever since with the Bluetooth. Right. Keyboard and mouse. Right. So I would say that this that would that is a very plausible fix, but that's for power issues. That's a power issue right there. That, that is a plausible okay. issue, and it, it, that's if your if your battery was failing or dying. I've, I've, that's one of the one of the steps you would use for that. Yeah. But I would yeah, recommend okay. the, the easier thing would be go back to device manager, scan for hardware changes. If not, there may have been some kind of damage, underlying damage you may not have seen. Yeah, well, it it, it just happened to be circumstantial that mm. I did a Microsoft update 
and then that it night, happened. And that's the morning when I turned it back on, the keyboard wasn't there. And that's why I'm thinking that's another thing that's leading me to believe that scan for hardware changes will get you squared away. Right. Okay, I appreciate it. All right, All right. Bro. Thanks, Larry, appreciate for your you, call, Larry. man. Yep. I mean, I, I, I got to say, I would not have done that myself. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I would not have known to scan for changes. I would have probably just gone into Device Manager and clicked most buttons. Mm-hmm. But and, and who, yeah. who would have known? <laughs> it, it's just like you do this enough times. It's a lot of times before you start. We, I've beat my head against the wall on certain things. And I'd be like, wait a minute. Hold on. And then I go and do one of the simpler things. Like, dang, I forgot to do that. And I have to remind myself sometimes I overthought it. Simplest, the simplest fix is usually the best fix. Right. Make it real rudimentary, just like anything else in life. Go and don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. Or, but yeah, I, I think Larry's going the right way, and I, I, I applaud him for the t- uh, the troubleshooting steps he's taking. Right. Yeah. Well, we got just a little bit of time left. Yeah. Going to try to answer these these two emails real quick. Okay. Any thoughts as to why my Logitech wireless mice won't work with my Windows 11 laptops? So I have both Dell and HP laptops. Uh, I'd say the same thing like what we just said to Larry. In a situation like that, sometimes you have to uninstall and reinstall the Logitech software. They, and, and even the Logitech software needs to be updated regularly. If it hasn't been, that's one reason. And also, again, keeping it simple, again, not questioning each other, anybody's intelligence, check your batteries. All right. <laughs> check your batteries. There that's, you that's go. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Bill, for that question. And we've got a final question from Linda. Okay. I can no longer delete numbers from a group text. I used to be able to do that. I have an iPhone 12. I keep mm-hmm. a group of friends that get together and used to be able to add or delete at will. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Linda. Mm-hmm. Um, so my first initial thought is mm-hmm. that this was previously an all iPhone group message. Probably. So iMessage group. Mm-hmm. When you have that, you can add and delete numbers. Mm-hmm. As long as they're iPhone numbers, right. you can add and delete them at will. Right. Soon as you add one nine iPhone user, so if that message turns green, you can no longer do <laughs> you that. Can no longer do that. No yeah. longer do that at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's my guess as to what happened. That's iPhone hating on us Android folks. That's it okay. is. That's, that's exactly okay. what it Being is. Haters. <laughs> it is. It is. All right. Well, that's going to wrap us up for the day. Cool. Thanks, Sabir, for helping myself and our callers out today. We got a lot of going on we today. Had a lot going on. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. So if you missed any of the show, make sure you listen back to it on your favorite podcasting app or download the MPB Public Media app. Everyday Tech is brought to you by Mississippi Public Broadcasting, Think Radio, and generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show today was engineered by the wonderful Jermaine Flood. Call screener was Will Park. We actually had two. We had Will Pickering and Henri Peggy. I've been your host, Abram Nanny, also the podcast producer. Thank you for tuning in. Up next is Dr. Jimmy with the original Southern Remedy. We'll be back next Wednesday morning at 10, right here on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.